Hello everyone. The Season of Dawn is here. It's been out for a little bit, so let's let's talk about it. Why not? You know, that's what we do here. Based solely on the first few days of play, I think Season of Dawn is going to be better than Season of the Undying, simply because its seasonal activity and seasonal gameplay loops are better. The Sundial, it's better than Vex Offensive. The Obelisks are more engaging with their rank up system and rewards within compared to scooping up bounties from Ikora. This is what you're gonna be engaging with on a day-to-day -day basis for this season. Therefore, that's why I think it's better. Now, does that mean you're gonna be stoked to be running Sundial every day for hours? Of course not. It's not designed to be run like that. Will the excitement go down after the honeymoon period? Of course it will. The Saint-14 story mission was great. I really enjoyed the experience of it all and I am excited to play next week's story mission. If all story missions were of this quality, that would be amazing. I'm not gonna spoil too much else of this because it was really cool and you should go do it for yourself. I'm guessing we're gonna get the follow-up mission on the 17th and who knows after that. The busy work leading up to the story mission itself, minus learning about the obelisk and the sundial, not the most thrilling content in the world, along with the weekly obelisk bounties. I've asked some of you how you'd feel if they just straight up removed some of the busy work and things were pretty split. If they removed the busy work, we'd have maybe an hour of new stuff to experience and then you'd be left to your own devices. With the busy work, I'd say it was about three to four hours to get to the main story mission and complete it, going at a casual pace, which isn't too bad. I have, thus far anyway, actually enjoyed the obelisk sundial new weapon grind. I like the investment part of the obelisk. I like that the sundial is challenging enough and is enemy dense enough that I can actually utilize some specific builds instead of fighting against other people on my own team for kills. How long that enjoyment will last, I'm not too sure, but considering I thought I would almost immediately not care at all, that's a win so far. The seasonal grind is my main concern for future seasons, as I've mentioned in the past. How many more times are people going to be satisfied with a menagerie variant while grinding for guns, as nice as they might be, as their seasonal activity? You know, we're going to run out of gun archetypes eventually. And while the new weapon perks on these guns are interesting, it's tough to care about a decent amount of them when reload and damage perks will continue to reign supreme. And it's tough to care about a lot of the new guns when we already have so many good guns in the game already, not even including Rituals and Pinnacles. And as long as they continue to keep coming forward, I don't have big reasons to care and that is with me intentionally trying to use non-meta stuff outside of raids. I am so loaded on guns. The seasonal exotic symmetry is pretty fun and I think is pretty good overall. The fact that it two taps people in PvP with only a few stacks of revolution is a slight bit concerning. Gambit invading even more so, but Gambit is a lost cause at this point. However, considering that PvP is currently just people using Arbalest for the Crucible Ritual weapon, it's tough to tell where it'll land after the lasers settle, although I didn't really see it that much in general when I was grinding for Komodo. The back and forth functionality is really fun and creates a game within itself, trying to maximize the stacks and the damage, not to mention that it apparently has the Unstoppable mod built into the Revolution mode. And the Catalyst quest, while still long, doesn't require you to have it equipped. Not only that, but you can gain progress in more ways. I think the best version of this Catalyst quest thing would be to have both. You could progress the quest by doing activities without it equipped, but if you do have it equipped, you can go even faster or you can gain progress simply by using the gun. The Recluse nerf, as predicted, did not do a ton to the weapon in PvE. It is still really, really good, but the nerf was never designed to cripple the weapon. It was just designed to make the gap between it and everything else in the game a little bit smaller. I played a bunch of PvP to get Komodo, and I can tell you that it's still pretty good there too.
I'm actually looking forward to seeing a couple of different nightfalls in the master difficulty as well. Playing the arms dealer, being back at lower levels and having some of the challenge return was fun. It felt a little bit like a new experience. The biggest point of contention of this season seems to be with Dawn mods and them being limited to Dawn armor only. Now, normally I'm a fan of shedding the old stuff and bringing in the new stuff, but a three month turnaround is a bit quick for me and I would say most other people. I would say a year is a good amount of time before anything like that should happen. People are mad that their old armor is quote obsolete, not my words, and now they need to grind out completely new full armor sets to use the Dawn mods to have optimized builds. Now I think obsolete is a bit hyperbolic. After all, nothing in the game requires you to have a hyper min maxed build, not even master difficulty content. Most of the time I have one or two sets of armor that I use for most things in the game, and then I make swaps to select armor pieces if I need to. A great example is Master Nightmare Hunts. I don't have a full armor set for Master Nightmare Hunts. I have a single class item with Supreme Nightmare Breaker on it that I swap to, and that's it. PvP needs a little more effort behind it, maybe two to three pieces. So on one hand, no, you do not need to immediately trash your masterworked armor set from the previous season just because Dawn mods are only available on Dawn armor. No, your armor from the previous season is not completely irrelevant unless you want to be the min maxiest min maxer out there. Well rolled masterworked armor is always going to be useful regardless of season. But the Dawn mods are limited by their elemental affinity and in order to really benefit from any of them, you will need at least two new armor pieces for a single element. Two armor pieces, not that bad to get, but two well-rolled armor pieces of the affinity you want is asking a bit more. And again, two is the minimum. As I've said before, if high roll armor pieces were a bit more available to grind out, then this might not be as much of an issue, but finding any high roll armor can be difficult. The season rank armor does become higher level as you grind out ranks, something to keep in mind. Season of Dawn has no new pinnacle sources. Yet, I'm guessing the hard mode of Sundial will be a pinnacle source, and if it's not... <coughs> if the Dawn mods had their elemental affinities removed while providing bonus effects for players who make the extra effort to match elemental affinities on the mods themselves, there's a bit more freedom available to players. People want to play with the new mods, but don't want to use armor with bad stats in order to use them when they have better armor already. It seems like the limitation of having affinities and needing new armor is a bit much for people, especially considering next season will likely have the same situation. I do think there is a little bit of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation here. If you make it so you can drop mods in any armor, there's no reason to grind out new armor sets in future seasons besides looks. But that gets into a whole other topic in Universal Ornaments and how people feel like every armor set should be made into a Universal Ornament, which I think would be fine, mostly. If you make it so you can't do that, aka what we have now, then people feel like they're being rushed. Three months for an average player is a very fast turnaround to try to maximize a new armor set, much less for each character. I think part of the issue as well is that since literally everything from seasons past can be made relevant, there is just armor overload, wanting or needing to keep multiple pieces of armor from every season just to use their mods or special perks. Now add elemental affinities on top of that. It can be exhausting to keep track of all of this even though you're not being forced to keep anything or use anything. Armament mods seem to be the main offender with barrier in a close second. I think more vault space isn't an unwarranted desire, and I think people feel like they need almost too many armor sets to play the game that they want to play. Notice how I haven't talked about PvP at all. That's because besides sandbox changes and some maps rotating and rusted lands coming back, not much happened. Comp is still comp, tons of people getting to 5500 within hours of the season launching. PvPers still have no way to grind for endgame materials or gear. So I ask you, 
person watching who is enthusiastic about PvP, what's it going to take to make you, the PvPer, happy in this game? What kind of experience is required to keep you engaged? More frequent balance updates? Better reward structure? A rework of competitive? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Speaking of finances, Eververse. I've talked about Eververse about a million times at this point, and I think my final statement on Eververse is just going to be this. The Eververse and all other similar stores are a product of millions of dollars of research done by companies to figure out at what price points Bungie, or by extension, any company selling cosmetics or microtransactions, will make the most money. I used to think that if prices were lower, then more people would engage with microtransactions, which surely would increase revenue. The thing is, if that was the strategy to make more money, then it would have already been put in place. Things are priced as expensive as they are because that's what generates the most amount of money, period. End of story. Don't take this as me saying that I'm happy with it, because I'm not. I would love more cosmetics in the game as part of gameplay. I would love more bright dust coming from bounties. I would love the store to just not exist and have all of the things be in the game. Anything that removes items from the store and makes them more accessible in-game, I'm for it. Anything that makes the Eververse experience less annoying, let's do it. But Eververse does not feel like it is up for negotiation because Bungie needs that cash to pay for literally everything and I don't know enough about their finances to say anything beyond that. Nobody does. The couple of bones thrown to us where we get a better heads up for items that will never be sold for dust and all that is as far as I see Bungie going. I don't see them dropping prices or making big changes unless the store reaches a point where selling at lower price points will generate more revenue than selling at higher ones. That is the only condition that will make the store change. And even then, if the store was making less money, the store would still be around. It just won't have as much stuff in it because if less money is made, then fewer items get made. They don't just get thrown into the game as a lost cause. Also, who the hell is buying upgrade modules for dust? Who? Explain yourselves. Feedback seems very split on the community right now with regards to this season. Ultimately, how I think you feel about the new season partly depends on how much you have shifted expectations for how much content Bungie is going to be able to deliver and how jaded or tired or burnt out you are on Destiny. Me personally, I have been enjoying upgrading the obelisks and playing the sundial and I want to upgrade everything all to the max. Sundial is a pretty fun combat experience, you know, it doesn't really stray too far from the menagerie style, but I like that kind of stuff. But I could see myself tuning out after a little bit. Some people will look at the launch of the new season, see the one story mission, see the sundial, claim that there is nothing new or nothing to do and will immediately move on. And while I don't really agree with the hyperbole there, since you're paying 10 bucks for content distributed over the course of three months and not really one day, I can still see why some people are jaded or apathetic. Going back to my previous point, some people are tired of horde mode light, seasonal activity, grinding for guns. I'm definitely feeling it. I'm feeling the burnout. It feels like the game has gotten a little stagnant in that regard. I'm rarely challenged by the game and I wish there was something more. It needs a little bit of a shakeup. This is making me realize how much I missed doing what I called tryhard strikes in Destiny 1, where I would go for high scores and fast times in strikes using a third party website's rating system. Story wise, I'm torn a little bit because on the one hand, Saint 14 and that whole situation is really cool. It's cool to see a character that we've heard about for years, despite being dead, be a part of the game experience and not just locked to lore. His fate after next week is unknown. He might just be gone. He might turn into a vendor. I don't know. On the other hand, oh man, the Red Legion's coming back. They found a new timeline. We gotta stop him. Ah... I'm over it. I'm tired of dwelling in the past. I'm tired of seeing unresolved storylines. Things need to happen. If anything, I'm more excited to see what's going to be happening in Season 10 and 11 because I don't know how much more we can do with the Red Legion and Nightmares and etc. without actually pushing some form of story forward. What's next? The Exo Strangers coming back? 
Let's get this train rolling. Let's go somewhere. I know that that's what this season is supposed to be setting up. You know, it's setting up future story stuff. I'm just saying that I hope it will be set up and that we're not going back to Fellwinter Peak with Saint-14 because Siva came back. Delete my account now if that's what's happening. Just get rid of it. No, please. We're only a weekend, so obviously it's hard to judge how the entire season is going to turn out before, I would say, February or so. If you checked out my Season of Dawn tutorial video and it doesn't look interesting to you, then I'd say you could probably hold off on this season until we find out more information. Or maybe you just skip it all together. If you're active on Destiny, or if Destiny is your main game that you play, then I don't really see a reason not to get this season though, because it's new stuff, new guns, new things to grind for. But I think I'm gonna need a, a new spark of energy or, or something to really reinvigorate me. Those are my first impressions of the season. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.